Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific to showcase stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. I'm Colleen McAlooney the, from the Patsy T. Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and today we have Liberty Peralta from Popoki and Tea. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So let's get started and tell us how your, what, about your business and how it got started. Sure. Um, so I, uh, I, I visited several cat cafes. Um, I, I used to travel a lot for both for work and for pleasure. And um, this was sort of in between, this was before I, I got my the cat that I have now. Mm -hmm. And um, I had actually heard about cat cafes from a former boss. He had supported a Kickstarter cam campaign oh. uh, for a cat cafe that's now in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So that's how I initially heard about the concept. And then I got curious and visited a bunch up and down like L.A., Seattle, Portland, and, and just really liked the concept of uh, using a business to also help promote some sort of social cause mm -hmm. and that causes for animals and animals can't speak for themselves. So that really, um, that really spoke to me as someone that grew up, I grew up in Waianae mm -hmm. and my dad, my dad had all these animals. So right. from a young age, I was just used to having animals around me. And, um, but the thing was, we never really had cats growing up and through my, the influence of my boss and just other friends that liked cats. I was like, oh, like, cats are actually really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, going to these cat cafes kind of helped solidify that. And then, and then I just thought like, oh, it'd be really cool to open one here. So I kind of came back from my traveling and um, did a bunch of research, reached out to other cat cafe owners and kind of picked their brains a little bit about running a cat cafe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, terrific. So can you explain what the concept is? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. I should probably explain what a cat cafe is. So um, a cat cafe is, uh, so picture a regular cat cafe. Mm -hmm. um, Starbucks like, likes to use the phrase uh, third place. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the place that's not work and not home. It's sort of like a place where people go to socialize, right? right. So you take the concept of a cafe and you add cats to it. So um, a lot of cat cafes in, uh, in the U.S., have a separate room where cats that are available for adoption um, are in this particular, it looks like a cat lounge mm -hmm. where people can pay a cover fee and hang out with cats. And um, the, the idea is, it's, there are several purposes for this. Um, the idea is to kind of alleviate shelters or fosters from taking care of these cats and having them in this sort of third place. Mm -hmm. And that way they can, intake more animals because there's always going to be a need for um i guess houseless animals mm -hmm. um th 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 it's a revolving door right so right. if we can help alleviate some of that and also provide a place for people to socialize then mm -hmm. it's sort of a win-win for everybody right yeah so does your cafe will your cafe follow that model yes of having the separate Lounge, cat lounge. Yes. For, yeah, and, for and clients to hang out with the cats. Yeah, and and part of the reason for that too is because um, it's also to comply with Department of Health regulations because they, <laughs> they don't want animals intermingling with uh, where food is being prepared. Right. When you go to other countries, particularly in Asia, it's kind of a free for all where the cats are just all over the place. Oh. And, but but in the U.S., it's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So separate yeah. area for the cat lounging yeah. and separate area for the cafe. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, okay. So now we know what motivated you. So you mm -hmm. have a love of animals? I do. Yeah. And it was installed in me from very young. Again, mm -hmm. like, because I grew up in sort of a rural area and my, my family just always had animals around. So right. um, I think, and I think also introducing uh, kids to animals, it kind of teaches, it teaches them a lot of things. It teaches mm -hmm. them empathy and learning how to think outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps develop. Um, good citizens of the world. So sure. that's kind of one of the things that I hope to accomplish with Popoki and Tea. Sure, understanding yeah. that others than themselves need caring. Right, right. Or, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, great. And then, so, um, your, explain your business model at the moment, your current business model. Right, yeah. So actually, so Popoki and Tea has been operating as a pop-up for the last year and a half. We started doing pop-ups in June 2018, primarily in Kaimuki, mm -hmm. um, because I, um, as, as a cat owner, <laughs> I have one cat and um, 
she has needs. She has you have to feed her. Yes. So I I, I I'm a customer of this uh, this pet supply shop in Kaimuki called the Public Pet. Okay. And we had started talking. This was very early on, a couple of years ago, when I was still thinking about this idea. Right. And just I, I was just like, oh, maybe, what if we did like a cat cafe pop up? And uh, Jordan, the owner, just like loved the idea because mm-hmm. he, his pain point was um, his his dog adoption events are very successful, but he had a really hard time with cat adoption events. Ah. And um, kind of attaching sort of this cat cafe concept to it, I think really resonated with people. Mm-hmm. So when we started doing the pop-ups at his space, I think it, we, we kind of found sort of an untapped audience. Mm-hmm. And obviously it helps his business too, because more people are going into his shop. Sure. And um, yeah, it's another sort of win-win situation. Right, Yeah. right. Well, that's so nice that you've been able to collaborate with another small business owner yeah. in helping both his business and in yeah. getting your business up and running and off the ground. Yeah, for sure. And and it's it's part of a community, right? So mm-hmm. I, I live in Kaimuki too. Yes. And when you're a part of a community, you just kind of want to see everyone else succeed. Mm-hmm. And he's a friend. I consider him a friend. Right. So yeah, just kind of everyone's boats are float yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So when you're at the public pet, mm-hmm. how do you handle the cafe? Are they, So the cats are there with everybody, or is there a separate area? Or? Yeah, so, so that was sort of one of the things we had to figure out in the beginning was um, it wasn't like how a permanent cafe would have two separate rooms, because mm-hmm. the public pet is one big room, right? right, one big shop. So the way that we do it at the pop-ups is we have the kittens in uh, an area in the back, mm-hmm. and we have we have them in um, like small kennels mm-hmm. in the back, and people can kind of like take take them out and pet them or like carry them around. Right. And for us on the food and beverage side, um, we actually prepackage all of our cookies and and our tea. Mm-hmm. So that was sort of our way of getting around that because because the Department of Health just really doesn't want like any food prep happening sure. when there's cats around. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, okay, so why don't you explain the food cafe section of your Popoki and tea? Oh, yeah, what sure. What do you offer? Yeah, so um, we specialize in, in milk tea and, bo- and boba tea. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason for that was just because I have just like a genuine love for, <laughs> for sure. milk tea and boba tea. Um, and I also felt like there weren't a whole lot of other cat cafes that were doing, that were, that were focusing on that product offering. A lot of them... Um, that exists kind of focus on just the traditional, you know, co- primarily coffee. Oh, okay. oh, but also we have a small tea menu. And I've always been more of a tea person anyway, so mm-hmm. it just kind of made sense to go that direction. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And there also seems to be sort of this small subculture of people that um, really like cats and boba tea. <laughs> I mean, this is something that I discovered after we did the pop-ups. Like, oh, it's like it's such a cute... You know, right. combination. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's very cute. <laughs> and your logo is adorable. Yeah. 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 I, I made this good. actually in PowerPoint, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's great. You're a small business owner. Yeah. Figure it out, right? Right. <laughs> so how often are you doing the pop-ups then at Public Pet? Is so, it only at Public Pet right now? Um, yeah, for the most part. I, mm-hmm. we, we, did, um, we did a couple of others at this other Kaimuki business called Ten Tomorrow, mm-hmm. which is a, a boutique because the owner, Summer, really loves cats. She oh. has two cats of her own. And so we, we also tried out pop-ups there, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and the advantage to doing it at her space was she had separate rooms. Oh, okay. So we were able to experiment with that model, like a traditional cat cafe model. Sure. Um, but, yeah, we primarily do them at the public pet just because mm-hmm. um, we kind of want to, we want, well, there's several reasons we want to help them out. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been such a great partner. And also um, kind of getting people used to the idea of coming to Kaimuki and coming to the public pet because mm-hmm. the, uh, the space that we've since secured is actually right next door. Oh, okay. The permanent so the brick location. And mortar. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, how Super exciting. exciting. Yeah. So you're already making that transition then from pop up to a yeah. brick and mortar store. For sure. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And so maybe share with us a timeline on that if you know it. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, we're still finalizing the blueprints for it. Mm-hmm. And um, it still has to go through the whole permitting process. So mm-hmm. we're hoping sometime in early 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Will open. Never know how long that's going to take. Know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. 
Oh, that's yeah. thrilling. Oh, thanks. That is fantastic. Yeah. So you had mentioned um, that you had visited other cat cafes along the West Coast. Yeah, primarily, yeah. And are there, so we're, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about competition. So what mm -hmm. would your competition be in Hawaii? Um, I kind of look at the competition as everything that a person can do in their spare time because, mm -hmm. I mean, our, our, our offering is, is an experience. Right. And in Hawaii, it, the challenge is um, how can we convince people to come to our cat cafe instead of staying at home or going to the beach or, yes. you know what I mean? There's so many things that you can do on this island. Right. Um, I think in terms of direct competition, there, there is another cat cafe mm -hmm. um, in Kapahulu. Oh, okay. Um, so, but yeah, I, I just, I was kind of thinking about this the other day because um, there, there's this book called Blue Ocean Strategy. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard of it, but mm -hmm. it talks about sort of the difference between uh, a red ocean strategy when when companies kind of oper operate within the competitive set that already exists. Mm -hmm. So like, take for example, hotels. They're all competing against each other mm -hmm. within a framework that they all know versus operating with a blue ocean strategy, which is which is focusing not so much on beating the competition because there really is no such thing as beating the competition because success is temporary. Mm -hmm. um, really, it becomes more about what, what, what value do, do you offer to the market mm -hmm. and how can you be the best version of that? And what, are your, what, what is your mission? What, what do you want to bring to this world? And I think that kind of sets, businesses that do that kind of set themselves apart like then the then the competition becomes irrelevant mm -hmm. because now people are just gravitating toward you because they're into your into you yes as opposed to like oh you're better than x right right so, right yeah. oh well, that's really an interesting take on yeah on competition and dealing with uh, uh, your own business yeah. and not having a negative not yeah. necessarily negative but more of like you're saying that competitive feeling but worrying just more about yourself, I yeah. mean, your business, how it's doing. And then right. also you've already started collaborative relationships right. with, with uh, similar type businesses, right. which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's a community and you want to well, see other people in your community succeed, right? Right. And, you know, I mean, any cat cafe that exists now or will exist in the future mm -hmm. has the same goal of eventually finding these cats' homes. Right. So feels kind of silly to be like, I'm going to beat that. You know, it's just yes. kind of, it kind of is a small game to play. Right. Um, right. When it really should be about how can we offer the best experience for, mm -hmm. our, for the people that come in. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah. And I'm sure it's an yeah. amazing experience too. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to go to break now and we are going to come back with looking, taking a look at some pictures of uh, Liberty's, um, pop-up cafe where it is and just some photos of some cats and and it's really I mean, who, sweet yeah <laughs> it's fantastic anyway thank you so much and we'll be right back you should watch talking tax with tom and this is tom this is tom yamanchiki president of tax foundation of hawaii and we meet every couple of weeks we talk about tax tax policy what else do we talk about tom well, you ask me a whole bunch of hard questions. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way we do. We, we cover tax, fiscal policy, uh, economics, 101, 102. <laughs> we try to explore how the state works economically and in terms of fiscal policy and in terms of tax. And if you don't think that affects you, look again. Okay, Tom Yamachika and me, I'm Jay Fidel, talking tax with Tom every couple of weeks. Watch our calendar and you'll see us. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at one o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. 
Today we have Liberty Peralta from Popoki and Tea joining us to share about her pop-up soon to be brick and mortar store. Yeah, yeah. exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. So we're going to take a look at some photos of uh, Popoki and Tea. We'll see her logo here. Right. Yeah, the, so the logo I designed in PowerPoint. <laughs> I know. Well, did you, was there some kind of inspiration behind the logo? or I knew I wanted to keep it simple mm -hmm. and um, shapes. I mean, like all the very iconic uh, logos that are out, like Apple's logo or Nike's logo, they're very mm -hmm. simple. Mm -hmm. And so I, that was basically what I was going for. And also I didn't have all the fancy tools. I, I literally like designed that in point right, so it was like right. a circle and two two triangles yeah oh it's cute it's really cute <laughs> yeah okay great and then there's some photos of the yeah of a kitten yeah that's actually from our second pop-up i think Aww. yeah so he's one of the very first kittens that were adopted cute. and uh his name was luigi <laughs> like mario and luigi oh yeah and those are the teas that we sell at um at our pop-ups oh, we, we bottle them so do you usually have four flavors yeah, usually at the pop-ups we have we have one or two um, sort of plain tea options because not everyone mm -hmm. likes milk tea. Right. And we have a couple of milk tea flavors as well. Mm -hmm. And we kind of switch them out, switch them out depending on like the season. Oh, so cool. like right now we have a, a it's it's November so mm -hmm. we have a, a pumpkin pumpkin spice latte. <gasps> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the that's PSL great. Action. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So we'll have that actually at our next pop-up. Okay. Uh, on a is it okay? Uh, yeah, about? yeah. so on, on Saturday, November 30th, which, which is actually the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Small um, business Saturday. Small business Saturday. Mm -hmm. So Kaimuki is going to have a lot of things going on mm -hmm. as part of that. Um, but one of, the, one of the things that people can do is come to our Cat Cafe pop-up at the Public Pet. Right. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. There's a couple more photos. I think yeah. there's, oh yeah, that's at one of, is that at the Public Pet? That actually is, um, so I wanted to kind of show people what my vision was for the cat lounge. Mm -hmm. And so my friend who has a photography studio in Kailua, she set, set up this whole photo shoot for me. Oh, nice. And that was one of the pictures from, oh, from the photo Oh, that's great. Shoot. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. And then yeah. let's see, there's one more, I think. Oh, there yeah. you go. This is from the, uh, it was either from the first or second pop-up. Okay. We, sometimes have lines that look like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> because we only That's let... That's impressive. Yeah. We only let a certain number of people in the shop at a time. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to scare the animals. You don't want to scare the cats. Yeah. Um, it, it can get overwhelming. Right. So we let about 15 to 20 people in oh, the shop at good. a time. Yeah. That's yeah. good. So that's why the line. <laughs> right. Well, and you must have some boba followers also. Yeah. Some tea followers. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's yeah. ingenious. I love that oh, combination. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. That's me too. fantastic. I'm a lover of both. So yeah, for me awesome. it works great. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about your affiliation with any um, of the SBA partners. Oh, and yeah. And maybe how, if any of those services uh, helped you to get your business started. Oh, yeah, of course. So, so the very beginning... Um, so I was talking about how I was talking to other cat cafe owners, mm -hmm. and one of them in particular was very helpful, gave me an outline of basically like a roadmap of what I should do. And one of the things that he stressed was take, if you can, take a local uh, workshop or class about how to start a business if you've never done this before. Mm -hmm. Because they did the same thing and it was invaluable. Like you couldn't stress enough how invaluable it was. Right. And that's actually what led me to go on a uh, search engine and look up what offerings we had here in, in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found um, Launch My Business, right. the, the program that, so it's a program that the uh, Patsy T. Mink Center at um, YWCA downtown mm -hmm. has. It's, yeah, and at the time it was a seven week program. Right. And um, it's, it, yeah, it's like a crash course on how to start a business. Oh, good, and terrific. It, yeah, it was very helpful because I don't know how I would have done this without it because mm -hmm. Again, it gave me uh, a roadmap. Mm -hmm. on, Structure on right. your path. Yeah, because otherwise I'd be like, okay, I file this paper, and then I file this paper, and then like, what order do I do this in? Mm -hmm. And that program really nicely. And it kind of went in depth, too, with each section. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was good. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then now you're currently working with another partner? Yeah, so, um, so now I'm, I've been working with um, the Small Business Development Center. 
right. um, in Manoa. Mm -hmm. And um, Lori Hiramatsu has yes. been my counselor. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I actually just met with her, and um, she's 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 also really good about giving me some structure. Mm -hmm. And um, well, you're moving into a big I, yeah phase of your business development yeah. now with the build out. So yeah, that's... so I'm doing things like financial projection. So I actually already had that as part of my business plan when mm -hmm. I when I was um, working with. Um, with launch my business, yes. but you know, updating it, and um, she's also having me create sort of a mock-up employee schedule. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I how do I envision? Because that that'll help determine how many people I of need course, to hire. and then how much that's gonna how much it's gonna cost. Too, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Oh, terrific! Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that mm -hmm. you're getting resources that that can help you. Oh yeah, and that are affordable. Right. 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 Exactly. So yeah. That's fantastic. So Small Business Development Center mm -hmm. and the Mink Center for Business and Leadership. Yeah. Oh, yay. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to watch your, watch your growth and expansion and <laughs> to see the fruits of all your efforts because oh, that's thanks. a lot of hard work. It is. It is. Yeah. So in this process, do you have any takeaways or any insights mm -hmm. for people who are considering starting a business or who are maybe in the same situation you are in a growth phase of yeah. really getting their business up and running? Um, I would say for people who are thinking about starting it, maybe do some research, talk to some people, see if it's a viable concept, uh, mm -hmm. maybe test it out and sort of, uh, that's actually another reason why we did the pop-ups because we wanted to test the market out and see if there is even a, a demand for this. Right. And clearly that, that photo of the people standing in line. Yes. <laughs> there is a demand There's for There's demand it. Yeah. for cats and tea. Yeah, because <laughs> I think one thing, you know, if, if I could do this whole thing over again, I think I waited kind of a long time. I, I spent a lot of time um, kind of hemming and hawing about, oh, should I do this? Like, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if this is what I want to do. Um, and it, it took me a while to be, okay, just like talk to people yes. and get outside of your own head. And um, is that after you had visited the cafes and it was an idea in your head? Yeah. Or, oh, okay. right. So yeah. You already had the idea, but it was just taking that next step. Right. Well, that's a frightening step. Too, it is. Right? It, because no, it, it makes is. it more real. Right. Exactly. Right. So you, it took you a little time before you set up the appointment to come and see what services mm -hmm. or even look it up. Yeah. yeah. Or even just like talk to other people that own businesses too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that also really helps me. Because yeah, um, yeah it, it is, it, it wasn't without reason, right? Mm -hmm. the, the whole indecision part of it. Because mm -hmm. it, is, it is a huge step. Yes. But, um, other people have done it, so it's not impossible. It's just a lot of work to get there, and mm -hmm. a lot of it takes a lot of mental grit too. So anything you can do to build up your your mental this is another tip. Like on anything you can do to build up that mental grit, because um, I think sort of even a version of myself a couple of years ago, um, I think I I needed to develop that strength mm -hmm. because you know things. I mean, there, you come across a lot of things that get frustrating. And you kind of have to learn how to keep going and find that strength within yourself, you know, build up a network of people that you can reach out to, right. you know, for help. Your support group. Right, exactly. Because right. Um, it's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. Being a small business owner, I think yeah. I say that on every show. Yeah. It's so hard. Yeah. And it takes, it's 24-7. Yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. then once you have a actual brick and mortar and a retail location. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a whole other beast. A, it's another level of commitment. Right. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. All right. Let's see. What else have we got? We've got, so your vision of success. Oh, okay. What yeah. Do you, what do you see maybe short and long term? Mm -hmm. Well, short term, I mean, I think the, the overall goal, again, is to help find permanent homes for more cats because the more that we can do that, the more cats that are non. So we we partner with a nonprofit. That's where we get the cats. Oh, okay. I should have mentioned that earlier. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah. So um, the the nonprofit that we work with is called Cat Charities, and they're mm -hmm. based in Pearl City. They're um, foster based, meaning that they have a network of fosters that take care of cats that have either been rescued or abandoned mm -hmm. um, out of their private homes, and so they're developing a, a system where. Um, Cats will be uh, spayed, neutered, deflea, dewormed, you know, pr basically prepping them for adoption for the cafe. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So that's all taken care of by the time they would right. come to you. Exactly. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that really, I think, increases the likelihood of the, ca of the cats being adopted. Then. Right. I mean, it's, it's also you, again, that goes back to having 
<laughs> building the best experience for your guests too because right. no one wants you, you know you want to play with clean cats that have been taken care of right, right? so right. that's that kind of fits into that sure too. yeah sure right um but we actually already do that with the pop-ups but mm -hmm. it's just another kind of step for the for the permanent cat cafe right um so that's what we work with because people sometimes ask me like, oh, do you foster all these cats in your house? And I'm yeah, just like, exactly. have you seen my, <laughs> I live in a 400 square foot studio. Like yeah. I can't have 10 no, cats. No, I my... don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. No, so, but that's yeah. also, that's an important part of your business. Right. So it's, it's great for people to know. Right. That, you yeah. Know, how the cats have been so well cared for. Yeah. And where they're coming from. And it's also, again, helping another nonprofit or another organization that's already doing this mm -hmm. work and giving them a public public platform because mm -hmm. the thing with these foster based organizations is they don't have a shelter that where they can showcase these animals that are being taken care of right they because they're being fostered out of right homes. so you're giving them a place right exactly oh, that's wonderful yeah that's terrific yeah and so let's see we're going to wrap it up just a little bit so uh maybe what's your what do you where do you see yourself in five to ten years oh right <laughs> so that's okay um Find as many homes that are um, committed to giving the best life possible for the cats that are in our cafe or at our events. Mm -hmm. um, it would be great if we could adopt out hundreds of them, maybe even hit a thousand at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and you've hit what right now? So right now we're at, at about 80 oh, kittens. Okay. And we started doing these monthly pop-ups in June of 2018. Right. So it's been a year and a half. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah, great. It's pretty good, yeah. And then are you hoping for multiple locations or right now it's just focused on the one kind of key location? Yeah, right now right now I want to uh, we haven't opened <laughs> we haven't opened the first one yet. So oh, I want to okay. make sure that the first one succeeds before yeah. looking at expansion. But excellent excellent small business yeah. sense there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I want to thank Liberty for being here today and sharing her story with us about Popoki and Tea. So Please uh, be sure and visit her store, her pop-up store at Public Pet in Kaimaki mm -hmm. on Small Business Saturday, uh, November 30th. Mm -hmm. And then also, I just want to mention, I always like to plug our uh, Shop Small Hawaii. So Shop Small Hawaii is a, an initiative to help support small businesses. Uh, Popoki and Tea is a registered small business, and we help small businesses through workshops, uh, promotions, and also promotions through our Instagram. So um, please be sure and support a small business on Shop Small Saturday and actually throughout the whole holiday season and the year. So shop local and shop small. And then one other thing that we're doing now is we have, we actually have a, a small business collaboration with uh, Rappily and uh, Punky Aloha. And they created a wrapping paper for Shop Small Hawaii this year that uh, is uh, three sheets of paper, $10. It's a wonderful way to help uh, support our initiative to support small business. So thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, Liberty. And we look forward to seeing you next month on Adventures in Small Business.